This week on Sneak Previews, Flipper, the big new family film with Paul Hogan and Elijah Wood and the world's smartest dolphin. And Twister, the tornado-sized box office hit from the director of Speed. And Heaven's Prisoners, a moody crime story with Alec Baldwin and three glamorous co-stars. Plus, The Horseman on the Roof, a lavish adventure story from France. All this on this week's Sneak Previews. Just settle down for a minute, Michael. Well, <laughs> Twister was an ill wind that blew somebody good because in its opening week at theaters across the country, this elaborate disaster movie with the stunning special effects sucked in $37 million at the box office. And on this sneak previews, we'll talk about why and give you our very different views on Twister, telling you whether it's a turbulent thrill ride worth the price of admission or whether it's really just full of hot air. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. And I'm Michael Mehta, and I hope not full of hot air this time at least. Well, we'll get to Twister in a moment, but first we're going to go to our family find, and that's Flipper giving new life to that famous fictional dolphin who first charmed America way back 30 years ago in the early 60s. Now, in this version, Elijah Wood plays a brooding, unhappy 14-year-old who's sent to spend the summer with his beach bum uncle in Florida. And that uncle, who's nicely played by Paul Hogan, soon shows him that the available meals aren't exactly on the level of a five-star resort. You want your spaghetti eyes with over that? With that what? Freeway Franks. Suit yourself. But you know, once we get out there on that ocean, you can't exactly order up a pizza. Like my dolphin? Your dolphin. Later, the lonely kid right. makes friends with an orphan dolphin. I found him. What's his name? Uh, his, his name is Flipper. <laughs> well, if he's really yours, then make him do something. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, jump! <laughs> But local fishermen aren't so impressed since they think Flipper is interfering with their catch. Come on, you've had your fun. Let the animal go. Oh, but isn't a Greenpeace warrior? <laughs> I can see this animal means something to the kid. It does. Well, now isn't that sweet? Yes. Isn't that sweet, boys? Yeah. The kid and the fish are pals. You know, if I were you, boy, I'd watch how I choose my friends. I said enough. How to teach you a lesson. Yeah, I'd like that. I have a thirst for knowledge. Teach me. School's out for the day, is it? 
I love Paul Leoga. I expect him to say, that's not a knife, this is a knife. It's a very good comeback role, and we should sure give credit is. to Jonathan Banks, who was very good on to the TV series Wise Guy. He makes a very good heavy here. I'm not sure that Elijah Wood looked terribly happy to be in this movie throughout. Well, and where did that girl playing, come from? He's supposed to be playing an unhappy kid. I thought sure. Elijah Wood was fine because he's playing this sort of brooding, sulking kid who, who somehow is healed by the friendship with Flipper. And all of that is a bit silly, but this is a charming yeah. film. I think all families are going to enjoy it. We're not the intended audience. I took my daughter. She loved it. Uh, I didn't ask her where that little blonde girl came from. We never see that girl's parents. She's there to get a female presence sure. in the movie. Well, it's cute, and Paul Elgin makes a good comeback, well, he, as I call he, him. he does. And look, I've got to give a lot of credit to writer-director Alan Shapiro, because uh, what, what he does is he does try to update the old Flipper series, but he does it with great sensitivity to the family audience. I saw this with Danny, I mean, my, my three-and-a-half-year-old son. He stayed through the whole thing? He sure did. He loved it. And one of the things that was terrific about it was they didn't go overboard with the intense part. I mean, there's a part with a shark where there's a battle between Flipper and the shark. They cut away, you don't really see blood. And, I, and again, they, someone paid attention to the fact that little kids were going to be watching, and I appreciated it. My that. daughter was a little scared by that, but you knew early in the movie they referred to this hammerhead shark, and yeah. you know that at least adults know in the back of your mind that sooner or later, and that's the biggest hammerhead shark I've ever seen. Well, it's the it's, first it, time again, a hammerhead's ever started in the movie. It's a robo shark, just as Flipper. Oh, don't tell me that. I'm not supposed to know <laughs> there are that. There three different real dolphins who starred together with a robo flipper who was very convincing. And I mentioned Alan Shapiro before, who wrote and directed this film. His previous film was somewhat different. It was called The Crush, remember? Yes, but he also... With Alicia Silverstone, right, he which also, was a very much adult thriller. And this shows versatility that you can do a film like this so convincing. He also did a movie made for TV called Tiger Town with Roy Scheider about a kid and the Detroit Tigers, one mm -hmm. of the best baseball made for TV movies okay, I've ever a seen. Baseball made for TV movie. I know you'd know it. Look, one of the things that uh, I appreciated is for nostalgia buffs, they bring back the song almost effortlessly in the middle. Flipper, flipper, in the middle of the movie and I think people will appreciate Leave it to that. you to note that. Well, next we turn to Heaven's Prisoners, a totally different movie, I'll say, starring Alec Baldwin as a former New Orleans homicide detective. Since he quit the force, he's been leading a peaceful life in the bayou with his wife, Kelly Lynch, but he can't resist getting involved in a criminal investigation that's now threatening their family. Somebody came here? Yeah. Don't worry. I took care of it. Well, hey, 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 hey. Did the guy say what he wanted? What he wanted was to scare the out of me and Alan Fair, and that's exactly what he did. What did the guy look like? I don't know, he looked like a big bad guy, Dave. So is this the way it's gonna be? We can't have kids of our own, and... Now I'm here with a child pretending we have a family? What the hell do you think I'm doing all this for? I'm out there protecting that family. Hey, Dave. You're not a cop anymore. We gave all that up, remember? What do you mean, we? I had to live through it, too. And I won't do it again, Dave. I can't. Later, one of his old friends from police days, an exotic dancer, well played by Mary Stuart Masterson, comes back into Baldwin's life to help him. And here, she meets Terry Hatcher, the conniving wife of a vicious crime boss. Have we met? Not formally. You're a performer of some kind. Oh, that's right. You work at that little place on Bourbon, Smile and Jack's. That's right. Now I remember you, too. You came in one time with a couple of real pretty girls, asked me to work a private slumber party, but I don't really go in for that sort of thing. I think you got me mixed up with someone else. Well, maybe you're right. The girl I'm talking about was real trash. She had a butterfly tattoo on her belly. <laughs> Mary Stuart Masterson's very good in the movie and a surprising role for her. There's a natural quality to her performance, sort of an effortless quality, which is exactly what I thought was lacking from everybody else. Everybody else, very much including Alec Baldwin, just seems to be trying too hard to do serious acting, to do accents that come and go. In a film that doesn't come and go, it just comes and stays and goes on and on and on forever, almost two and a half hours long, with no purpose, no point. See, I disagree with your vote. Some of what you say has a truth to it, uh, as is always the case from my perspective. <laughs> well, it's very condescending. I appreciate it. I, I think it's too long, but I think Alec Baldwin, even though his accent does come and go, nevertheless is a wonderful screen hero.
And even though the storyline... He's a wonderful screen presence. Well, yes, he is. And I think he's worth seeing. And I think the cast, which also includes Eric Roberts, again, as a slimy character, this time a crime boss. But here, he gives one of his most eerie performances. And Terry Hatcher is so very finally, good. So after doing it 12 times, he's getting it right. Maybe I mean, so. Eric, Eric he's Roberts getting it right. Okay. The problem, everything we've seen before. This is the, the, the cop. He's a former alcoholic. Yes, he is. Interesting who character. Who wants to go straight, and he's being dragged back into a life of crime. Right. That's the you genre know, the, that this is. Yes, I've seen it before, and perhaps even better. But I think Alec Baldwin's performance carries the day. I think if you overlook the fact that the storyline actually follows a straight path all the way through, you'll fall into the atmosphere and the mood of this but, picture, but and I think you'll find it satisfying. That's all there is. This is directed by Phil Janu, who had done State of Grace and Final Analysis, and those films, it seemed to me, had exactly the same problem as Heaven's Prisoners, which is they were too self-consciously arty. Everything was sort of composed and heavy well, and wait, wait, rich with you atmosphere. Also, you... And, and, and they, this one, is, the, the title, Heaven's Prisoners, it's supposed to have all this religious symbolism. Well, what the religious symbolism is is a lot of shots of church steeples yes. with nothing ever explained or but anything more than that except some, pretension. But there's also some explosive action in this movie, and I think people who like action movies and aren't turned off by the violence in the film will like this picture, despite and, the flaws and, which are and there and have to be Some addressed. of the explosive action is completely non-credible. I mean, I think there are chase scenes that go on too long. Oh, but they're way wonderfully the done, though. Well, we saw the same movie and just saw it from two different perspectives. <laughs> Very different perspectives. Well, now we turn to something else, which is Someone Else's America. That's the name of the movie. It's a bittersweet comedy about struggling immigrants in Brooklyn. Tom Conti plays a Spaniard who runs a dingy little restaurant and gives a tiny room there to brooding Yugoslavian Miko Manolovic. Now, these two unlikely friends fight over the one man's pet rooster, but they recognize that they still very much need each other. Later, Tom Conti welcomes his friend's entire family, including a go-getter older son who starts taking over Conti's restaurant. What do you mean? I so rarely adore every frame of a movie as I did here under the direction of Goran Paskalevic, who good. did Tango Argentina. Good. This movie involves involves a goat, a beautiful woman, a Chinese bride, a blind Spanish mother, the a Rio rooster. Grande, a rooster, illegal immigrants. You never know what is going to happen from one frame to the other. And Tom Conti, though Scottish-born, is so convincing. Never mind that his accent isn't perfect. He is one of the most endearing actors. And these two disparate characters fall into sync so early in the movie. You just never know what to, ex what to expect from one, one frame to the next. You don't. Why I love it's it. a completely original, completely wonderful. I think this is going to be one of the best movies Absolutely. of the year. And one of the things about it, it really is about family. I mean, you talk about family values, uh, you meet three generations of this Serbian, actually Montenegrin family that comes here to America, and one of them actually played by the real character's real-life mother, who's mm -hmm. also a distinguished actress. And, but, but you also have the family of these immigrants who find themselves, though from very disparate nationalities, together in Brooklyn and learn to function together. And those connections, those friendships, are so real, so passionate, that it's one of those things that I think people are going to take home and remember. You mentioned the country Montenegro. Montenegro. There was a movie called Montenegro, and the moment By they said Susan that, Macavea. you good for you. This reminded <laughs> this reminded me of that too. That was another movie oh, where you just didn't know the, what the, was going to happen. Yeah, but the difference is that was a really dreary, yeah, depressing but, film. but it was unpredictable, the, and that's but, the key but, quality here. But the, but one of the things that is not so unpredictable, and I appreciate it, is that there's great love for these characters. And one of the things that that you've got to give this film credit for is there is a family tragedy. We alluded to it. I don't want to say right. what it was because it would give it away. But you kind of keep expecting the movie to go the cheap way Absolutely. And, and, to give, and to give you sort of a cheap feel-good ending. It doesn't do that. It gives you a feel-good ending, but it's completely different from what you're expecting. But they flirt with giving you a, a cheap uh, feel-good ending, and then they grab your emotions in a brilliant way. It is one of the best films I've seen in a long, long time. Well, next we turn to Twister. That's a special effects extravaganza, of course, which has already taken the country by storm, if you will, blowing away all sorts of box office records. It's set in Oklahoma during a rash of tornadoes and centers around a gang of gonzo scientists trying to send a tracking device into the funnel of a twister. But the daring storm chasers, Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton, literally have a difficult road to hoe to achieve their goal. Okay, we gotta get out of this. Really? Idea. 
Later, during a brief lull, they visit a small town when another monster tornado threatens to blow everything away. This is such a subtle, understated little film. Of course, all the so subtlety stupid. of a flying truck through the air. But you know what? No twists and twister, but it's a straight-ahead thrill ride of a movie. The tornadoes are fantastic. The human sort of filler in between the five tornadoes is a bit it's boring. It's invisible. But you know what? The special effects are so good. People are getting their money's worth out of this movie, and it's a good summer movie for well, people to go see. okay, that it is, but it's one special effect repeated five or six times. <laughs> it's as if Michael Crichton wrote a screenplay, a 20-minute screenplay, then went to the Xerox machine and did it. Because you see one storm, then a lull, then a silly romance, then another storm, then a lull. It's just predictable. And you know, the special effects are wonderful in this, shall we say, post-Jumanji age, when you you can do anything with a computer. Sure. I have to give credit to that. That's brilliant. But Bill Paxton is in a role that where Tom Hanks reportedly turned down. He's okay. He's a bit too handsome and good-looking for you know, the part. The and Helen Hunt no, and he no have no chemistry. chemistry. Yeah. Right. There but you go. Part of the story, which we didn't mention, is that he's story? supposed to be... <laughs> well, what story? So, such as it you is. Need a micro, you it's, need a microscope. It starts out with Bill Paxton and Helen Hunter, ex-husband and wife. They're estranged husband and wife. He's trying to get her signature on the divorce yeah. papers. And it's supposed to have that old, you know, uh, Cary Grant, Roz Russell chemistry right. that they had in His Girl Friday where they they really want to come back together. Yeah, but right. But nothing happens between them. Exactly. It's not just that they get interrupted by tornadoes one after another is that there's just no there there and despite the fact that Helen Hunt I think is an interesting leading lady and appealing and heroic and, and fun Gertz to watch. Jamie Gertz is very good in a second lead as the woman he's going to marry and she's a yeah. I think a psychologist and she's constantly getting calls on her cellular phone but it's so but silly it's just set up between the special no effects. No one notices Jamie Gertz or Bill Paxton or Helen Hunt it's all about the tornadoes and the tornadoes give a stellar performance. The clips are all you need to see <laughs> in this movie. Well finally we turn to a very different film and this one this time is called the Horseman on the Roof. This is a visually stunning romance and adventure story from France. It's set back in 1832 with two strangers played by Juliette Binoche and Olivier Martinez who are thrown together during a cholera epidemic and are trying to escape the soldiers who want to put them in quarantine. To do so, they're ready to use bribery or any other means. On m'a dit qu'elle prend. Nous sommes deux, ça fait 14. Fais pas le couillon, toi. Bon, j'en roule à 20. À qui je les donne Descends de ton cheval. Vous voulez plus, c'est bien. Dites-le combien. Arrête tout ce que tu as J'espère que vous n'oublierez pas. C'est promis. Vous parlez comme un officier. Je suis colonel. Colonel Ça existe, colonel de votre âge Oui, en Italie. Later, they're taken prisoner with others who've been exposed to the deadly disease. But these are two people who won't stay in captivity for long. Merci, sir. Get 
Arrêtez-vous Well, those look like great scenes, and I'll tell you, two of the most charismatic young stars in, in, in films. I'd never Absolutely. seen Olivier Martinez before. Boy, are they the both terrific. The screen heats him up, and she is, Juliette Binoche, is a wonderful actress. She was very good in Damage. She wisely turned down Jurassic Park because she knew the dinosaurs <laughs> would be the stars, and she explodes off the screen. Why am I voting no? Because despite those scenes, which look like furious action, most of the movie is them riding along and stopping and seeing dead bodies being picked <laughs> over by crows. Dead bodies from cholera epidemic. Right, right, from the cholera epidemic. And the atmosphere is there, but I wanted the story to do something. Now, and the chemistry between them is only suggested. It's not consummated, see, shall that, we say. I think they have terrific chemistry between them. And the movie is so visually stunning. I mean, it's just glorious. Oh, that it is. That directed it is. by Jean-Paul uh, Rapineau, who had previously done the latest version of Cyrano with Gerard yeah. Depardieu. And look for him. He makes a cameo yeah, a appearance in this appearance. movie. Right. But that film also had this one, like, this one it was lavish and lush and elegant. This is a beautiful film, film to look at, and it's so beautiful, in fact, that I don't think you care that much that the story is one-dimensional. It's, it's based, by the way, on a very famous French novel mm -hmm. of 1951, part of four novels that were the Horseman series by Jean Giannot, who's a, a, an exalted French author, not very well known in this country, but will become better known because this film's going to be a big See, success. See, you talk about uh, Heaven's Prisoners being too long. I got that sense here, and soon, yeah, I think, the star becomes the cholera epidemic, whereas the political situation unknown to most American audiences should have been the star and why these people are where they are and where You're they're talking going. about That's the political really situation enough. he's an Italian revolutionary yes. uh, very uh, good uh, during, during uh, yep. struggles against the Austrians who are coming but all of that is 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 secondary to these two people who are not only incredible looking they but sure they're are. great performers and I think they carry this movie and make it very much worth seeing I vote a respectful no despite some superb performances by two fascinating actors well now to summarize the movies we covered this time our best bet is the quirky touching bittersweet comedy, Someone Else's America. It's beautifully acted and totally heartfelt and original. It's rated R for lots of earthy language, a brief sex scene, and another brief but intense scene of a violent brawl. And we both like Flipper, which is our family find. It's charming, cheerful, and appropriate for even the youngest viewers, despite a smattering of mildly off-color language and one scary scene involving a ferocious shark. On Heaven's Prisoners, we split. I thought the superior performances from the entire cast overcame the lumbering script and excessive violence, but Michael thought it was pretentious, indulgent, and seemed to go on forever with little or no purpose or payoff. It's rated R with abundant tough language, graphic sexual content and nudity, and loads of gory, explicit violence. On Twister, we split again. I thought the special effects were overdone and repetitious, like watching one 20-minute movie six times in a row, but Michael thought that director Jean de Bont did a wonderful job of recapturing some of the awesome wonders and terrors of nature, even though there was a shortage of depth or chemistry with the characters. There's a bit of harsh language in the film and some scenes showing the brutal impact of the violence of killer tornadoes. And finally, we split again on Horsemen on the Roof. I thought it was a superbly acted film, but too long with no real substance or surprises in the one-dimensional story, despite good performances. But Michael was swept away with the visual splendor of the movie and the charisma of its two splendid stars, Olivier Martinez and Juliette Binoche. It's rated R with one scene of nudity and some intense and quite graphic violence. So that's it for this week's show. Please join us next time when we review Dragonheart, the new sword and sorcery epic with Dennis Quaid and the voice of Sean Connery in Spy Hard with Leslie Nielsen as a super spy who's not quite as suave as James Bond and The Arrival with Charlie Sheen and Ron Silver in a chilling story of outer space invaders plus homage and welcome to the dollhouse all on the next Sneak Previews. I'm Michael Medved. And I'm Jeffrey Lyons. And until next time on Sneak Previews, don't forget to save us the aisle seats. Today at 1 o'clock, a look back at a legendary entertainer. Join us for Judy Garland, The Concert Years. That's today at 1, here on GBH2. Skeleton Coast Safari is next. Yes, I'm a feeling and a much, much more. The weather is fine, you and you're busy, you can